Problem 3. For each integer n in the range 0 up to 11 inclusive, Eliza has exactly three identical pieces of gold that weigh 2 to the power n grams. In how many different ways can she form a pile of gold weighing 2,021 grams? There's a clarification. Two piles are different if they contain different numbers of gold pieces of some weight. The arrangement of the pieces in the piles is irrelevant. When I first read this question, it made me think about binary because of the powers of two, the weights of the gold pieces. But just as a quick recap, in binary, the columns are two to the one, two to the zero, two to the one, two to the two, two to the three, and so on. And when you write a number in a binary representation, you just use ones and zeros. So this, rep this number here is a representation of one lot of two squared and one lot of two to the zero. So that is equal to five in decimal notation. So this question is similar to binary, but instead of just being allowed one piece of gold of the weight two squared, we're allowed one, two, or three, or zero. So we can write numbers similar way, but we can use the digits 0, 1, 2, or 3 in each column. So I could write the numbers 3, 2, 1, and this number here represents three lots of 4, two lots of 2, one lot of 1, and so that is 17. Okay. And whilst binary is unique, so that's the only way that I can write 5, this is no longer unique because I can write one of these twos here, I could replace with two ones. I could write three, one, three, and I get the same number. So this question is about how many ways can I write a number in this representation? There is something useful that we can use from binary. In binary, if I move all of the digits, one column to the left, so if I write one, 0, 1, 0, what I have done is I've multiplied everything by 2. So I've taken 5, multiplied it by 2. Exactly the same applies to our new kind of representation. So if I start with 3, 2, 1, and I multiply it by 2, 3, 2, 1, 0, and that represents a number double 17. So that represents 34. And that will prove le useful later on. A useful technique with BMO questions is to look at some small cases and see what we discover. So let's do that. I'm going to use the notation f of n to stand for the number of different representations of the number n. So the number of different ways we can make it out of gold pieces. So if we're trying to make the weight one gram, we can only do that in one way. But if we're trying to find representations of two, we can have two lots of one or one lot of two. And for three, we can have three lots of one or one two and one one and so on. And let's just pick out, um, let's look at a more complicated example just to check that you're following. We can have, to make seven, we can have three twos and one one. We can have one four, one two and one one. We can have two twos and three ones or we can have one four and three ones. So here are all the ways that you can represent the numbers from 1 to 7. And there are two things that stand out quite strikingly. One is that there appears to be a pattern developing here. We've got 2 and then 3 and then 4. That looks quite nice. And the other thing is it looks like the number of representations of an even number is the same as the number of representations of the following odd number. Let's start with that second observation first and have a think about how we can show that is true. Let's take 4 as an example. 4 is an even number, so this column here must contain a 2 or a 0. Can't contain a 1 or a 3. And that means we can definitely add 1 onto this column. So we can definitely increase this 2 into a 3 and it will still be a valid representation. And if I do that, it becomes a representation of 5. Now, if I increase this 0 to a 1, it becomes a different representation of 5. And if I increase this 0 to a 1, 
it becomes another representation of 5. I can always do that. I can take a representation of 4. I will always be able to add 1 into the final column, and that will turn it into a representation of 5. Now let's look at these. These representations here have to finish with a 3 or a 1, and that means I can always take 1 away. So I can take my representation of 5, I can take 1 away from this final column, and I can turn it into a representation of 4. And in that way, we can see that these are paired up. There's a one-to-one -one map between representations of 4 and representations of 5. Because every even number will have the same restriction on it, that it must end with zeros and twos, we will always be able to do this adding to match it with the following odd number. And because every odd number ends with ones and threes, we will always be able to take one away and match it with its even number. So with a little bit of careful explanation, you can show that f of 2n is equal to f of 2n plus 1. We need to look in more detail at even numbers. Let's take 10 as an example. We've already noted that the final digit needs to be a 0 or a 2. And I'm going to start by considering these representations that finish with a 0. We said before that in this form of representation, multiplying by 2 will move all the digits to the left. So these are all multiples of 2. If we take 1, 0, 1 and multiply by 2, we get that. And 2, 1 multiplied by 2 gives us that representation. And 1, 3 multiplied by 2 gives us that representation. And these are all, unsurprisingly, representations of the number 5. So we can get all of these ones that end with zeros by taking our representations of the number 5 and doubling them. Now here, these ones all end in a 2. But if we took that 2 away, there'd be representations of 8, and we could do a similar thing. We could take representations of 4 multiply it by 2 and then add 2 and it becomes a representation of 10. And any representation of 10 that ends with a 2 we can get in this way because if we remove that 2 we get a representation of 8 and that will have come from doubling a representation of 4. So we can get all of our representations of 10 by looking at the representations of 5 and of 4. And this generalizes to give us f of 2n is equal to f of n plus f of n minus 1. What we've got so far is these two relationships, and we've looked at some small cases. If we look at these small cases, f of 2 is 2, f of 4 is 3, f of 6 is 4, it looks like f of 2n is n plus 1. And that's what we're going to try and prove. We're going to prove this using induction. Induction is a really useful technique. And if you haven't seen this before, then I suggest you ask a teacher to explain it to you or you look it up in a book. We've already got a, a base case or two here, and so let's have a look at the inductive step. We're going to use strong induction or complete induction. And so instead of just relying on one previous case, we're going to assume that all previous cases are true. So we're going to say that f of 2n is equal to n plus 1 for all values of n less than or equal to k. So it's true all the way up to some point k. And now we need to consider k plus 1. So let's think about f of 2 times k plus 1. Now we have two different cases here because we've got to think about it when k is even and when k is odd. But straight away, we can rewrite this as f of k plus 1 plus f of k. And if k is even, this will be the same as f of k. So let's take case 1. k 
k is even, then this will be equal to f of k plus f of k. But we already know f of k for an even k is equal to k over 2 plus 1. And we have k plus 2, which is exactly what we wanted. Now let's look at the second case when k is odd. So this will be even. I'll leave that as it is. But because k is odd, I can use this to say that f of k is equal to f of k minus 1. And now we can use our inductive hypothesis on both of these. So this is equal to k plus 1 over 2 plus 1. And f of k minus 1 is equal to k minus 1 over 2 plus 1. And this gives us, as before, k plus 2, which is what we wanted. Right, it's time to put this all together. So, we have seen that the number of representations for an odd number is the same as the number of representations of the previous even. And we've just shown that f of 2n is equal to n plus 1. And finally, we get to look at the number that was in the question. So we were asked about the number of ways of making 2,021. 2,021 is odd. So that's the same as f of 2,020. And that is equal to 1,010 plus 1. And we finally get our answer of 1,000 and 11.